Hi everybody, thank you very much for tuning in to my little Whiskey 101. My name is Kieran Elliott. I work with the Edrington Company, who has McAllen, Highland Park, Glen Rothes, a bunch of very, very good spirits. Uh, and I love my scotch and I love to pass on some information. So today we're continuing the chat about how best to enjoy your single malt scotch. And today we're going to be talking about drinking meat, adding water, adding ice, that sort of thing. So very first and foremost, if you're drinking your scotch neat or you prefer to drink your scotch neat, that's absolutely fine. If you think about it, that's the way that we've presented it to you. It's our best expression, if you will. And apart from the, the very first bottlings in our lineups, you know, the, uh, the discovery skews, as it were, those tend, some of them are, are, are bottled at 40% alcohol, but most of the core range, uh, most of, of our main offerings are bottled at 43% alcohol. But then further on, up into the limited releases and higher end offerings, often that alcohol percentage goes up. And the reason being, if you were to give someone a cask strength, full, you know, 60 plus percent alcohol to somebody who had never tried scotch before and they did the old spring break, there's a possibility they could never come back to scotch. So we always like to offer something a little bit more approachable until you get used to scotch, until you get the hang of it and you know what you're doing a little bit better. So drinking neat is absolutely fine. There's this great, um, one of the things I noticed when I first came here to the States is there's a, a weird feeling in America surrounding adding water to scotch or drinking it neat. Uh, I get the impression that every, every American thinks that if you order a single malt scotch in a bar, and ask for some water to put in it. A little Scotsman's gonna jump out of a hedge and go, you can't even do that! That's heresy! It's not the case whatsoever. In fact, if you order a single malt scotch in a really good scotch bar in Scotland, they will offer you a little water back to go with it. We drink our single malt scotch often with a little drop of water, so it gives the, the, uh, uh, the consumer the choice, basically. So, if you want to drink it neat, absolutely fantastic, but, if you want to add a couple of drops of water, absolutely fine. No problem at all. If that's the way you like it, excellent. A couple of drops of water creates an exothermic reaction. It excites the molecules. It literally makes them excited and it opens up the flavour profile. We talk about opening up your scotch and that is literally just the molecules getting excited and literally bouncing off each other and opening up the chemical structure of the liquid. Uh, and it means that you, the consumer, gets a little more flavour, sometimes a lot more flavour and nose and palate out of your scotch. So adding a couple of drops of water isn't as bad as everyone thinks. In fact, it's a benefit. It can actually get you more flavour out of that glass. But as with anything, there's some rules. And the general rule with adding water to single malt scotch is it's easier to put more in than it is to take it back out again. So just go gentle, couple of drops, see how that affects your scotch. Uh, then if, if you want to add a couple of drops more, eventually you'll build up a profile of what works for you. And as I said uh, in the previous show with nosing, you nose them all or you add water to them all and you see what works for you. There is no right and wrong answers. Every single single malt scotch reacts slightly differently to water and everyone's palate is different. There is no right and wrong answers. If it works for somebody, it might not work for somebody else. So just experiment, be bold and enjoy yourself. Adding water is absolutely fine, no problem at all. Similarly, if you want to add some ice, it does the exact opposite. It closes the liquid down. That'll be an endothermic reaction, I believe, where it closes the molecules down, the molecules get cold and they all shiver together and it closes it down. Now, you might think that that's robbing you of flavour if the other way gives you more flavour. And technically speaking, possibly. But to some people, Scotch, especially maybe heavily peated scotches or very rich scotches, are a bit too much. So if you want to take just 10% or 20% off of that bigness that you get, then ice is absolutely fine. But again, there's rules. Uh, with ice, if you add too many small pieces of ice, you get a high surface area, it melts really quickly and it turns your drink into a slushy mess really, really quickly. And then you've lost all chance of getting some flavour out of that glass. Uh, my preferred method, as is many others, is the ice sphere. A perfect sphere has the lowest possible surface area of any shape and therefore melts slower than anything else. So an ice ball will just gently, gently uh, melt and will, your drink will evolve 
over time. Uh, earlier on, I showed you that I've got these little uh, skull uh, molds that I make these little skull ice cubes for my, uh, for my scotch. But the ultimate way to enjoy uh, ice in your single malt scotch is, of course, the Macallan ice ball machine which I will demonstrate uh, in just a second. But like I said, ice closes your liquid down and if it's too intense, that's absolutely fine. Add a little bit of ice, take, take it down a little bit and that's, that's wonderful. Uh, also, the great thing about the ice ball is it lasts a long time. It actually does you two good shots, does you two good drams and your drink will just gently evolve as time goes on. So that's water and ice. Uh, similarly, if you want to add chocolate milk, I will hunt you down. I'm not kidding. Uh, basically, however you want to enjoy it. I, want, I really want people to, to walk in, march into a, a good, good scotch bar and have the confidence to ask for the drink the way they want it. There is no right and wrong answer. And if somebody behind the bar tells you, oh, that's heresy, that's the wrong way to do it, tell them the, the brand ambassadors, the national account managers, the people from the, the scotch companies all say the same thing. It's the way you like it. There you go. So finally, just to round off this little piece, I did say I'm trying to keep this uh, to a nice like 10, 10 minutes or so. So finally, just to round off this little piece on water and ice, I, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to demonstrate the Macallan Ice Ball Machine. Now, uh, we used to do a show called Raise the Macallan and we would demonstrate Raise the Macallan. We would demonstrate the ice ball at every show at Raise the Macallan. And I always said the same thing on stage. I said, the best thing about this is the sound it makes when you take the top off. Listen to this. Sorry, sorry, force a habit. There we go. Um, I'm going to put that back on. Actually, I'm not. I'm going to put it down to the side here. And I have got my, my blocks, my little ice cubes to make these wonderful big, uh, essentially cubes of ice, right? Huge big cube. Now, you pop it into the base, point down like that. Then you put the top back on. And if you were quick on the draw, you would have noticed that the ice had actually started to melt down inside this. So this is copper uh, and fighter jet grade aluminum, uh, or aluminium if you're watching in the UK. That's a whole other tutorial. Uh, and it's absorbing the heat. Uh, these metals are great for absorbing heat. And they're absorbing heat in uh, Southern California, uh, it's 85 today, it's transferring that heat onto that piece of ice and it's melting slowly. And there's actually water forming around the bottom as we speak. And if we're lucky, we sometimes get a little bead right up the top there and that shows me that it's definitely done because the water has travelled up that uh, little chute there. It's almost done. And then we will get the perfect sphere out of that. Uh, while it's just finishing off, I wanted to cover off on something. Often a scotch is uh, cask strength, very you know high alcohol. Uh, and if you add water to a high alcohol scotch, you, you get that sort of amalgamation, that sort of, you know, you see the, the strata. It's like a thermocline in water where you see everything you know, melding together. And a lot of people think that there's something wrong with their scotch. So we chill filter to take out some of the oils that do that. But oil, as we know from cooking, is where the flavour lies. So chill filtering uh, takes a lot of flavour out. At Macallan, uh, we do a sort of cool filter process where we take out some of those oils, but we leave in a lot for a lot of flavour. Right, this is finished, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to take the top off. It is very, very heavy. I'm just going to put this over here, try not to get everything wet. And as you can see, I've got a little button here to push it up. As you can see, we end up with a perfect sphere. It's hard to get out of the indentation, but there we are. Perfect sphere of ice, which goes in my perfectly shaped little Macallan glass. I'm going to pop that down. I'm going to grab one of my favourite drams, Macallan Rare Cask. And I'm going to gently drizzle that over that lovely ice ball. I can see it melting slowly as we pour that on there because it is rather warm in my office here. And that, ladies and gentlemen, as far as I'm concerned, is the perfect serve with a Macallan ice ball. So, hopefully that was fun. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye on the video. Thank you very much for tuning in. See you again next time. And then I'm going to come back just to Facebook Live. If anyone has any questions, I have to lean forward because my computer's all the way out there. Uh, oh yeah, I know from experience that I've got to troll down here and see. Uh, I've seen this thing in action in person. I think it costs like $900 or something crazy like that. Uh, Philip Hess to Brian McGregor. Uh, Helen Park 10 year on the shelf. Yes, it is Tom Tobar, yeah. So classy, Evan, thank you very much. <laughs> I'm trying my best. Uh, Jerry Tosh, tap or bottled? Well done. 
I, I don't know if I mentioned in the last show I did, but when I first started being a brand ambassador, I had Martin Deraz teaching me, but I got a lot of my first information from Jerry Tosh's Whiskey 101's videos uh, on uh, YouTube. They're all in black and white, apart from the dram, which is coloured, which I always thought was amazing. Uh, and, and Jerry, it's actually filtered Brita filtered water. Oh, I like to make sure that my, my water is as, as good as possible. I don't have the, the heft to uh, be importing Highland Spring for my scotch yet, but I'll get to that point. But thank you very much for your, your comment. Nice to see you on there. Who else is on here? Slangeva from Buzz. Good to see you, Buzz. Good friend of mine. Groovy beard from Arabella. Thank you. <laughs> I'm working on it. It's my Corona beard. Uh, if there's any other questions, I will absolutely answer them if I can. Oh, Catherine Santon Schiff said, hi, Jerry. Jerry's a legend. Jerry uh, was in charge of Highland Park when I first came on board and just a great guy, great, great guy to, uh, to learn from. Absolutely fantastic. In fact, the first time I actually physically met Jerry, uh, he'd come to LA and we sat down and within like a minute, he pulled out the plans for Highland Park 50, the bottling, the, the different, uh, you know, sort of proposed designs that we're going to look at for Highland Park 50. He's like, which one do you like? Oh, huh? <laughs> I don't know. He's like, well, your opinion's as good as anyone else's. Isn't that phenomenal? I'll remember that to my very last day. So there we are. Uh, no questions at the moment. You can always reach out to me on social media or email or anything. I'm quite easy to find uh, if you have any questions regarding this or anything else to do with uh, Edrington, Macallan, drinking scotch, anything whatsoever. So thank you very much for tuning in. My name's Kieran Elliott and my next show will be at the same time on Thursday, 2 p.m. Pacific. 5pm Eastern and hopefully I'll see you then. Thanks very much. Bye.